Singapore Deputy Prime Minister Hing Sui Kiet says the government isn't expecting a full year recession at this point. His comment follows the release of the second quarter GDP estimates of 0.1% growth on year. Now, it's also the lowest or slowest economic growth since the global financial crisis a decade ago. Trade and Industry Minister Chan Chun Singh says the government remains focused on attracting high quality investments for the long term. And Manpower Minister Josephine Teo has also reassured Singaporeans that the government is ready to provide more employment support when needed. Eugenia Lim has more. The fallout from the U.S.-China trade spat was evident in Singapore's weaker manufacturing sector. The services sector is still sluggish, while construction activity is cooling down. The Ministry of Trade and Industry previously said Singapore's full-year GDP would be between 1.5 and 2.5 percent, but there are signs the forecast range could be revised in August. Looking at the current developments, economists are downgrading their forecasts. I think it would be prudent to actually shade the range down to 0 to 1 percent range. Because to get to 1.5 percent for the full year, that actually requires a fairly uh, sharp uptick into the second half. You know, it has to average about 2.4 percent year on year, which I think at this juncture uh, doesn't look like it's realistic. Singapore's Q2 GDP shrank 3.4 percent on a quarterly basis. It's a sharp drop from the 3.8 percent growth from the previous quarter. And economists are sounding the alarm of a possible technical recession. The latest GDP figure is the deepest quarter-on-quarter -quarter contraction since 2012. And economists say this indicates a rising risk of a technical recession. And that's defined by two consecutive quarters of slowdown. Since the start of the year, growth has been much weaker than we've been expecting. And the continuous rounds of downgrades to everyone's expectations of growth, that tells you you really can't rule out the possibility of a recession. The head of Singapore's central bank has said if the U.S.-China trade war drags on, there could be weaker growth in the second half of the year, which could impact the labour market. As far as like wage expectations, hiring intentions, probably we'll see a little bit of a dampening in terms of expectations going forward. The key really is what happens to the services sector because they, they provide the bulk of the employment. Economists say the odds of Singapore's central bank easing the monetary policy is increasing. They were expecting much better numbers than what we have. Given where we are now, the economy looks like it's in need of much more accommodative FX policy from the central bank. So we're expecting MAS to ease the, the FX policy settings in October through a reduction in the Singapore near slope. The official second quarter GDP will be out in August. Now, despite the disappointing data, the benchmark Straits Times Index ended the day up by a fifth of a percent. Meanwhile, the Sing dollar weakened slightly against the greenback. Well, despite weaker GDP estimates, Trade and Industry Minister Chan Chen Singh says the government remains focused on attracting high-quality investments for the long term. In a Facebook post, Mr Chan says the pipeline of investments shows Singapore is on the right track. Well, he cited Singapore's pro-business ecosystem, skilled workforce and stable political environment as among the reasons why businesses are locating here. Mr Chan added that significant investments by companies like ExxonMobil, GSK and Dyson are testament to Singapore's strong fundamentals. However, he cautioned that the current challenge is the longer-term shifts in supply chains and production patterns. He says the government's strategy is to build new capabilities expand into new markets and acquire new skills. He added that Singapore is not alone in upgrading and key is to act faster than the rest. Mr Chan says the government is committed to help businesses and workers transform. Manpower Minister Josephine Teo says the government is ready to provide more employment support when needed. In a Facebook post, she said the weaker GDP estimates would be concerning only if people did not notice it. Mrs. Teo said many in the labour force are paying, quote, close attention and are not panicking. Instead, some are preparing by being more flexible in their job search. She added that nearly 60,000 jobs are still unfilled and half of those are PMET jobs in sectors like financial services and infocom technology. Mrs. Teo says... As the economy transforms, new and better jobs will emerge.
She also reassured Singaporeans that there's no shortage of training programs to support workers. The minister says nearly 76,000 Singaporeans moved into new jobs through the Adapt and Grow initiative from 2016 to 2018. Currently, there are some 100 professional conversion programs in more than 30 sectors. Now, for more, we're joined by Margaret Yang Yin. She is the market analyst at CMC Market Singapore. Margaret, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, so we know the year-on-year um, -year figures. The Q2 on Q1 figures are also representing a drop, 3.4%, if I'm not wrong. How big of a concern is today's number, are today's numbers? Yes. So today's flash estimate of Singapore's second quarter GDP came in at a big miss. I think this figure really surprised a lot of people. And because the year-on-year -year growth of 0.1% is the lowest reading since uh, since, since the uh, global financial mm. crisis back to 2009. And this suggests that um, the risk of a technical recession, which is defined by two consecutive quarters of slowdown, is now on course of rising. So previously we thought that the recession is far away from us, but now it seems like the risk is emerging. Um, so this is definitely a, 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 of a concern for, for investors and uh, uh, for the policymakers. Okay, so saying that, how will it impact the stock markets then? Well, today the STI, the benchmark, didn't move much, mm -hmm. and actually it ended up, end up uh, uh, in a positive territory. Uh, but if you look at the manufacturing on the stocks, uh, they are actually trading much lower. Uh, so I think the overall benchmark was lifted by the hope that the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates uh, end of this uh, month. So that's a big positive factor for the overall stock market. But we need to be very cautious about this continuous slowdown in the manufacturing sector, which is a big drag of uh, the GDP data. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned there, big drag on GDP data. Um, how is the manufacturing sector predicted to perform uh, moving forward? Well, I think now the overall sentiment is pretty bearish. Mm. Uh, this global cyclical downswing in the manufacturing sector is not just happening in Singapore alone. It's a global thing. Mm. And in the Asia-Pacific region, I think many other economies like Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea, and even Australia, New Zealand, all these economies are facing similar headwinds. And that's why Reserve Bank of Australia, they have already cut down interest rate twice in the last two months, and New Zealand is doing the same. Uh, therefore, uh, it's, it's a cyclical thing and we think the slowdown in China's economy uh, is going to uh, be uh, uh, to be uh, extended for uh, a period of time and also we have these trade risks um, between US and China um, there seems to be lack of progression in the trade talks since the mm -hmm. G20 meeting so uh, it's a kind of uh, creates kind of uncertainty uh, to the economic outlook as well as the stock market so you mentioned that the drag on manufacturing, but you know, what are some of the other industries that perhaps could be affected as well? Are we looking at retail as well? Oh, well, uh, I think uh, based on today's GDP data, it seems like construction and service sector are still pretty resilient, although the, the pace of growth has uh, slowed down in the second quarter comparing to the first quarter. But still, uh, the construction and the service sector are still the strong pillars to support the economic growth. And uh, the jobs market is still quite healthy and tight. We are not worry too much about that. But if the things uh, are deteriorating in the third and fourth quarter, I think um, the central bank need to do something um, uh, to provide an easy monetary uh, environment. I just want to come back to what you mentioned earlier about the stock market. doesn't seem like the STI moved much today. Mm -hmm. um, is there a reason for this? I mean, do we have investors sort of priced in this weakness? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the stock market doesn't always uh, react uh, uh, to the macroeconomic data very promptly. Instead, if you look at the currency market, it's pretty obvious. Today, the Sing dollar has uh, declined about a quarter of 1% against the USD, reflecting a weaker economic outlook, as well as uh, the expectation that MAS may do something in the October meeting mm. to ease the monetary policy. That's why the currency market is uh, starting to reflect uh, this GDP data. But uh, in the stock market, it may take a longer time. So let's wait and see what's ha happening next week. Okay, what about investors? Do you think um, investors are optimistic or do you think they have perhaps been priced in the weakness or are they looking at bargains now? Well, I think uh, it's a kind of a dilemma for investors. On, and, and first of all, they do understand that the economy is not performing uh, very well. But on the other hand, they are also seeing uh, rate cuts. That means the, the risk-free rate uh, is now lower 
and if they put money in a bank, they may get lesser interest rates. So uh, there's, n there's, there's not many places uh, they can put the money in. Uh, but in the stock market, you still can get about 3 or 4%, even 5% dividend, which is much higher than the bank rate. So in a, in a, a, a rate-cutting cycle, uh, equity market, stock market, and uh, uh, the real estates, and maybe even those gold, are still um, better investment opportunities uh, comparing to cash. Thank you so much, Margaret, for coming in and speaking to us. We've been speaking there with Margaret Yang, Yen, market analyst at CNC Markets Singapore.